I'm on vacation, but I think I do. Yes. Let's see if we have some people. It is two o'clock. Yay. If you're tuning in from my newsletter, be sure to give me a little um, hello. And please, uh, oh my God, hey David, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> um, tell me if my stream is okay. I am praying, manifesting, it looks okay. I'm scared because the internet has been funky here. Okay, we are gonna do maybe the easiest tutorial I have done in a while with my new uh, glitch core brushes. I'm so excited. Hold on one second. Oh, that's my live thing. Bianca Page, hello. Okay, David, it looks fine. Lisa, um, hello, Lisa. Okay, good, 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 good. Hi from Norfolk, UK. Hey, David Taylor. Oh my gosh, I'm so... Sherry, hey, I'm so happy to see you. It's been a hot minute. I think that I haven't seen you online for a little while. I am excited. And Judda, hello from Germany. We are happy to see you here. And Diane, happy to see you. Oh my goodness, yes. I'm gonna be trying to do these live streams earlier because I don't want to be discriminatory for all my friends in Europe, but um, oh my gosh, lots of exciting things. It's been a week. I think we're all like a little bit frazzled, um, you know, like deciding whether to be online or whatever. And I think a lot of you guys um, had gotten my newsletter and I was just like, um, and so I put the thing about my little fundraiser, but basically, um, I was thinking to myself, you know, like we're watching what's happening in the world. Don't really know what to do. I'm not in a place to like give anybody else information, but I was like, okay, me sitting at home being like really upset about it isn't helping anybody. So I'm just trying to think what can I do in like a super small way other than like making a donation to the humanitarian crisis to help. Um, and so what I thought of is that any of my followers, any of my friends, if you've made a donation to any any charity directly that you want, more than $5, send me an email, send me with a receipt, and I will give you a, a gift card for $25 on my website. So if I can help like one or two people to like, you know, uh, donate or whatever and give you a nice incentive, then I figure why not, you know, it's, it's good. Um, so yeah, so that's that's like what I want to do in my small way. And a lot of a lot of us feel like really, you know, stressed and whatever, but you know, coming back to our art can be really relaxing, really therapeutic and, you know, give us something to do when our heads are like going like this. So, it's been a week, but so I've just been trying to like juggle um finishing my products media overwhelm, you know, and all of that. And then like deciding whether or not to be online. Um, your NL on time. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, Sherry. Oh, you see them whenever they're usually done. Yeah. So that's another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting on my website, like a little, I found an app that can like, um, integrate with my website. So usually I'm just going to put the next day or two in advance, you know, like I am not going to be scheduling, you know, the whole months of live streams because, you know, I'm moving, whatever. And so, yeah, watch that space, but I want to make it better for my, my friends to just be able to check and see when I'm going to go online. But for right now, the best thing to do is to subscribe on Behance. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do this tutorial in just a second, but I wanted to give you guys a little quick tour of the glitch core brushes. I'm really excited and I know a lot of you guys were really excited with them um, and one thing that I was saying before was that I was like oh well I'm gonna go through and like I'm gonna go through and edit 
before I released them. And I had three or four private messages of people saying, no, give, the, give us all the brushes, don't edit them. Well, I will say that I did edit them a little bit for making sure that they work good and everything. But my brush library that I created for this collection is 95 strong. So of course I went a little bit over the top um, per use, but I'm gonna give you all 95 of them and I'm happy with them. So, and the cool thing is like, not really just um, them on their, I mean, them on their own is quite cool, but what's funny is that they are using the Photoshop, um, uh, <laughs> oh, you guys love it. Okay, yeah, over the top. Oh my gosh, I'm like, it's crazy. But I'm not cutting any of those. And honestly, I have too many things going on. I just, I'm like, you know what? Here's 95 brushes. I'm happy with all of them. You can edit them for your own collection, but I'm not going to be doing that. So I went ahead and made a, I've already made like a contact sheet of all the brushes so you can see how they are. But what I love about the brushes is that, that you, they're so digitally inspired because they're using that Photoshop, um, what is it? The bristle brush engine, which is quite, uh, almost unuseful in a lot of ways. It's quite weird, you know, the bristle brushes and... But this way is like, they're very um, geometric inspired, but it's playing with that ge geometry and then creating things that are like very organic. And so like in this case of this, um, this abstract wave design, this uh, ocean kind of inspired design, this is two brushes, but it feels, I mean, it is very digital, but I like that contrast of like digital and organic. Hey Gabriella, so happy to see you and Bianca Page from South Africa too. That is amazing. Um and CNO, hello, nice to see you. So, yeah, so this one I was like I'm I finished the brushes. I'm going to be launching them on my website t today sometime later. But um and I finished the the zip file and everything, but whenever you launch a brush and stuff, it's quite there's a lot more to it, the uploading, the product description, the SEO, da, da, da. So it's, it's a thing. So they're going to be on, on sale for my website. Sign up for my newsletter. You'll get early, um, early pricing. And what else? Um, yeah. What was I going to say? There was something. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, so, um, yeah. Oh, and then the other thing that I was going to say is for my Behance subscribers, it's 10 bucks a month. Um, usually I put an edited collection every time I make a release on my Behance for my Behance subscribers. But in this case, I'm gonna put the whole collection. So in case you were thinking about becoming a Behance subscriber, now is the time. And let's see here. Oh, so we're gonna do this, this one in just a few minutes, but I'm gonna show you a couple other previews first uh, of the Glitch Core, like what you can do. And then if we feel like it, if we have a few minutes, we can do those ones. But I love like a lot of these samples that I'm doing is two brushes and you need zero talent, like zero realistic drawing talent. So here I was playing with the idea of like a motif and this is using the berries or whatever. These abstract berries are like one brush from my collection. And then I use one of my modern impressionists here. So so fun, so easy. That is like the um, the brushes in action. And then, oops, let's hear, hold on. There's another one that I did here. Da, 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 where is it? Oh, here. And what I love about both of them is it playing with the, the geometric of the brushes, but creating things that are organic inspired. So I really love that play. And here, I think it's really um, apparent as well. I use, I created these flowers using just like uh, a few brushes and, and I sampled uh, some pink colors from like roses and I just think they're quite interesting, quite cool, um, very easy. And so again, I love that play with, you know, geometric and organic. So I think we can have a lot of fun and I think what I'll do with these brushes is create like a lot of you know, floral and uh, for my display images and stuff. And maybe we'll have like a little series of doing flowers with these, but I think it's really fun. And florals are just always 
in season. It's March. Um, we're, you know, a lot of us, depending on your hemisphere, are finishing up uh, winter. So we're looking forward to spring. So I think that's really cool. So let's get back to here. And what we've done is I am using two brushes from my upcoming collection, the Glitch Core. And I am using the color palettes that were inspired. Um, I actually think that, oh, let's see here. Hold on, let me pop this open here. Uh, I sampled these in a previous tutorial. I'm not sure if this is exactly the same image, but it was, oh no, I think it was here, this image. So it's from Unsplash. And if you, most of you guys are familiar with my pattern uh, stamp technique, my color blending technique. If not, I've got the link down below but I've already sampled those color palettes. So I happen to have them in my photo, in my um, pattern library. And I was like, ooh, I'm gonna make something, you know, ocean inspired. So what I did was I had two of these brushes and I'm just gonna quick show you real fast the brushes in action. So I'm gonna go here and let's, you know what, let's just put a dark, dark blue background so we can kind of see the brushes better. So of course I'm grabbing my pattern stamp tool and I'm gonna grab like one of these um, color palettes here, my ocean palettes. And then I'm grabbing uh, brush number one from this uh, ocean glitch core. And a lot of you guys from my newsletter probably downloaded this. Um, and it's also available for my subscribers um, attached to this live. So here's the brush in action. And we can see this is some of that glitch core brush fun, but I love how it looks like ribbons and even you have a little transparency. So that's so fun. And it totally goes along with that like ocean sort of vibe. So basically what I just did was played with, you know, contrasting two of these brushes and then worked from dark to light. Um, and I had sampled uh, my color palettes from little part from the image itself. And if you don't know how to do that, link below. I love that. And so I just played with that, layered up those two brushes, added the other brushes, little accents, and there we go. I have, I had like a beautiful, um, cool ocean inspired. And it's just really cool because we didn't have to pick those colors ourselves. We just, you know, we're painting from photos here and just having a lot of fun doing it. So. That is the one brush. And then the second brush is, let's just turn that off. The second brush is this really fun, let's just zoom in here. This one is directional. So, you know, you can see you can control the direction. We've got all those lines crisscrossing and it just, you know, we just add those little, little tufts here and these little accents and again, kind of like waves. So it just couldn't be easier. Um, hi, Saeed. Hello, nice to see you. So let's just, I'm just gonna pull back the layers and show you how I created this. And in the demo file I've put on each layer here, you can see um, I've labeled them with two or one so you can see which brush that I've used. So let's just pull back all these layers and recreate this one by one. So, First off, we use brush two in the darkest one, and I'm gonna turn off these little highlights. So the first thing that I did was create a sand background. And so let's just get our little tests file here. We'll do from scratch. So there we go. I'm gonna grab this. I'm grabbing actually the brush number two, and I'm grabbing that dark, darkest color palette here. And I just want to make Let's just kind of brush my, let's see here. I want to make it, my, my, my demos never usually look as good as the other one, but as my original sample, but we'll just try that. So it's quite dark. You, you don't see a lot of the detail here, but it's cool. Like if you look close, you can see that movement. Let's just zoom in. So there we see all that beautiful lines that create that ocean. So easy peasy. That's the first one. Let's make a new layer. And then let's see here. These were some accents, but I didn't put them in right away. I added accents after. So then what I did, I actually think, let's see here. 
Now, the first thing that I did next was I created this one. Um, so this is using the brush number one. So let's grab our thing, grab our pattern stamp tool, our thing, bless. Um, and let's grab brush number one and let's see which, uh, I think I use this color palette here. Okay. And let's hear Sherry Pennington. Um, I believe my pattern stamp techniques work in elements. I've had people tell me they do. The elements interface is a little bit glitchy and I don't do like, or not glitchy, I don't know. It's just different, but I've had people say that they use, um, I'm fairly certain that you can use them in elements. So um, heads up, but I don't have any tutorials in elements. Um, so they would have to know how to do that. But yeah, I would say 98% sure that uh, they work in elements. So let's just go here and I've loaded that third color palette in and then let's see. So then let's just create some waves here. Let's make sure it's as pretty as my demo. So that's quite fun, good enough. Um, and there we've created that whole wave thing. I love it. We get the vibe. And then let's see here, let's go back. I think what I did is I created the this brush first, yeah, and then I kind of filled in all the gaps. So that's the fun part. So then I made this one. So we're keeping the same brush. And then let's let's see what color palette I used. Hold on. I have to kind of match here. I think, okay, it was this one. There we go. So let's make a new layer. We always want to put everything on their own layer. And that looks cool. Wait. Yeah, so fun. Now wait, how did I, I, okay, there was a little spacing down here. Okay, so we created that, well, okay, like so. That's cool. So we've got that, so that now we'll just fill in the gaps. So let's see what gaps we wanna fill in. And then we're filling in the gaps with the other brush, brush number two. So I believe that that is the last of brush number one. Yes. So let's go to brush number two. Obviously we're always on the pattern stamp tool and then let's fill in some of those gaps. So I put brush number one in between here. So let's go in between my two layers. I'm gonna grab, I have brush number, or no, is it brush number two, sorry. Brush number two, this is the thicker one. And I'm gonna grab, let's see here, this one here perhaps. And I'm gonna fill in those gaps. Is that what we did? It's over, oh no, I put it under both of them, okay. So this is under both of those brush, um, brush strokes. And maybe I'll have a little bit coming up on top. That's cool, okay. And then, let's go back to where, and then, ah uh, yeah, I put that, this one underneath the top layer. So let's add that. We're still, pattern stamp tool, we're still on brush number two. And I believe we grabbed the lightest one. Let, no, hey, cancel this one right here, this color palette. So we are on brush number two, that big, thick, hairy sort of brush. And, um, oh, I love it, Lisa. You, ins you were inspired by this to paint your nails blue. I love it, we will take this for a win. Okay, so we're above this layer and below this layer. Let's make a new layer uh, and what's your, so I kind of just wiggled around. That's kind of, yeah. Let's see, or maybe. Anyway. Kind of like it better on this one. How did I do that? Maybe I did this. Let's try this brush stroke really quick. No, it was this color palette, but I love how it turned out here. 
Okay. That's good enough. We'll just go for it. But you know, it's just playing with it. But I somehow always find the one, um, my final ones always look like, uh, the first one I do always looks better. Okay, so now we have some little accents with brush number two. So let's figure out, I'm gonna add these ones up here. I think that'll be easy. And I like how it it's behind those ribbony ones. So we're just gonna add those next and they are just above that back layer. So I'm gonna take that back dark layer, create one layer above it. And let's see here. Oh, Andres Krieger, thank you so much. So cute, I'm happy, yay. Okay, so let's stick on brush number two and we want kind of a dark color palette Mm, let's try this one, no, this one. We got, let's see how it goes. And how did we do it here? Okay, so I might take my brush stroke down. No, 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 I want a lighter. Let's go here. I think that's a bit better. Maybe even this one. No, that's too bright, okay. So we had these little, like, splashies here. And... So let's just make something similar. I'm gonna take my brush size down just a little bit so I'm hitting my left brackets. So let's just, and also these, this is like pressure sensitive. So, you know, if I push hard, it gets like this, but then if I push light, we get like that. Ooh, that's nice. Some nice little, nice little ocean sort of effects. So let's just add a few of them in there. There we go, okay, good enough, good enough. We are, um, uh, we are just, you know, whatever, working it out. Um, Lisa, I'm glad, yes, lots of trial and error because, yeah, I'm never knowing what I'm doing. Even if I've already created it, it's still a little trial and error because I'm like, oh, which one did I do? You know, which brush, which color palette? You know, that's life, what can you do? All right, so that is good. Now let's see what accents we did next. And these are all the accents are with brush number two. So let's go here. Okay, so this was a, a main little accent here on the top. And I believe these are using my lightest color palettes. So let's go here to the almost white. I think that's it. And we are gonna put these all on top. And now let me have a little look, see, where did I? I just did like light little strokes, like just very light. You see what I did there? Let me hit my left bracket, maybe, no. Let's see what size I'm working with. Okay, so you see how you can just get just the light understroke like that. We've got a little, and the, uh, just a nice little look. I like the little tufted look whenever I'm doing from top to bottom. And that's the cool thing with the glitch core brush strokes is that they are, uh, whichever way you do them, it's they're different. Because some of them have a directional um, control, but some of them don't. But that's the beauty of it. Or even if they do have a directional control, if I'm go brushing from top to bottom, I get a little tuft like that, you know? But if I'm doing like a little understroke, it looks different, totally, you know? so. Quite cool, I think that's awesome. Um, okay, so let's just undo here. And keep undoing, I just did it on this, okay. So let's just add some of those things. And those remind me of like caps on the ocean, you know, like the little white caps or whatever they're called, white caps. So we'll just add some. Those are kind of bright, but anyway. We'll just, we're trying to go with the flow here. So if it's not perfect, I'm not gonna like stress too hardcore. I think that one was a little better. I think we did, it's more of a soft gradation here. I think I jumped a, jumped a color palette. I'm gonna have to add something in there to like, we've got too much dark and light. We're gonna have to have like a and in between here, somehow I made it a little bit softer. Okay, and then what else do I need to do? Um, 
what, oh, and then I added like one there. Okay, whatever. So I think what I want to do is underneath that ribbon here, we need to add another layer and we need a little gradation here. So let's click on this bad boy here in the middle. Okay, we have some spam. Oh dear. Oh, I've really made it when I start getting spam on the Lime videos. I'm gonna have to work, fix that. Eeks. I don't know like what they accomplish with that, but anyway. So let's, let's grab brush number one again. And let's try to create a little, we've got dark and we've got light. We just need to like create a little bit of stuff little bit of cohesion, you know, a little bit of like, let's bring it together, you know? Those are those cool waves. Okay, oh, my strokes are quite not smooth. Okay, so whatever. So that's better. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then let's put just underneath that, maybe I'll use the same color palette and I'm gonna grab brush number two and maybe I'll throw some you know, curves up in there. So, you know, whatever. Close enough, let's see here, let's grab my caps here. So maybe like throw one up on top too. And maybe I'll grab a here and create some more white like caps. Close enough, pretty close. So here was my original. I think the flow is a little bit better, but when I'm doing it live, you know, whatever. Here's my live version. It's like what you ordered on Wish and what comes on Wish, but it's still the same brushes and it's still possible. So it's good. It's good. Um, so you get the idea, but this is two brushes. And then the, the last thing that I did was I just sampled the sand color and made a and got a little bit lighter, so I just took my eyedropper tool, went ahead and sampled the sand, sand color, I grabbed uh, a little bit lighter, and then I made a new layer, and then I just took my gradient tool, the, what do you call it, circle one radial, and then I, for my gradient, I had foreground to transparent, and then I just put a, like some little light highlights here to kind of tie that in with the background. But um, again, let's see here, let me just check my cons. Okay, still Nikes are there, okay. So that's the whole idea, but this was two brushes and we, we used two brushes, layered them on top, sampled colors from photos. So we didn't even have to like, uh, we didn't even have to pick out these colors, you know? I'm all about the cheat codes and sampling colors from photos is, or photos or any images is one of like, I mean, that's the foundation of my technique. So <laughs> anyway, so that's the main uh, tutorial. One thing that I'm gonna show you really fast, um, we're just honing in on about a half an hour. So I just wanted to make this one short. Um, let's look at this one that I did here. So uh, let me just separate these so that I can kind of show you what I did. Let's see here. All right, so I'm gonna show you how fast I did these using that new, um, using the new brushes. I mean, this is two brushes, but the berries is one brush. So easy. So I was just, uh, in case you don't um, are not familiar with that, I had all my berries on one layer. But if you ever need to like, you know, break something off into its own layer, you know, you can select it like this. And I think it's a universal keyboard shortcut, but it's Command Shift J, I think, to put it on its own layer. So that's what I did there. And then the leaves here. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just, I had created these all on there on the same layer because I was in a hurry. So I'll Command Shift J, pop those on its new layer. So to do the berries, um, I just used, what was it? Hold on, I think it's brush number one, but I had saved it over here, so hang, hang tight for one second. Wave, oh yeah, here it was. Okay, so, ah, I believe it's brush number one of the new collection. 
but we just go like this. And I grabbed a color palette from my um, Modern Impressionist brush collection, which is really handy when you're in a hurry because it's basically got like every color of the rainbow, but they've got like nice little j color jitters in between it. So you can, um, uh, <coughs> so it's always got that dimensionality. Um, okay. So yeah, so this was just one color palette and I made all of these um, little berries here. So, and sometimes they have a kind of a little hole in it, but I'll just go over them. So I just use my left and my right brackets to make the things a little bit bigger or smaller as I'm painting. But of course, because I'm using the pattern stamp tool, every time you brush the colors coming out in different ways, so that's how easy it is. And then if you want to kind of cover those little holes that form in the middle, I could just um, go like this. And that makes it even more cool and more dimensional. So that's how I created those berries. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, one brush stroke. I'm making little circles, um, no talent required. And then just underneath it, um, I'm going to make a new layer. And I just grabbed my lasso tool and it kind of, I mean, you can know, you could draw something so you could have the smoothing tool to make your shapes, but I like the rough nature of that. And I like, um, I just think it looks quite cool. So I will just go make some brush shapes like, okay, or not brush shapes, sorry, um, leaf shapes. And then I used modern impressionist, one of my modern impressionist brushes. Um, I think it was like brush three or something. It's one of the first ones and um, Oops, oh glad you like it Saeed and I just fill, filled in that space with that. So let's see here I appreciate you pushing the spam out of the way Got like some I have really made it. I've got spam um, so yeah, so I just did like that created those those leaf shapes and I mean that just shows you I mean how easy is that like and it looked cool. I had posted this the other day on like um, a preview or something and people were like, oh my God, that's cool. You know, I got all the, like some cool reactions and stuff. Uh, I think I put it on my stories and on my Behance uh, update, but so fun, so easy. And that's what I like to do. And I like to do something that make, you know, makes it look really cool. So I think that's a good point to stop for the day. And then maybe I'll do that, uh, this one tomorrow or something. And then just a real quick, uh, really quick preview of the glitch core brushes. I had used this color palette that I had on hand. Um, uh, hold on, let me just check my comments. Ivica, your order tracking wish. <laughs> um, oh, and hello, Arvind. Happy to see you tuning in from India. I love to see everybody tuning in from all over. That's super awesome. So these are the brush strokes and on their own, you know, they're, they're quite like, I call them glitch core. I went into the whole, um, behind the scenes or behind how I, how I started on these, um, on maybe my two lives ago. So you can check that out. So I won't go into that right now, but they're using the Photoshop bristle brush engine, but you can do some really cool things in this. Like some of them look like you can make it look like a spirograph. I don't know if those things kind of, um, and it's, you know, just all these lines and just very geometric. But what's cool is I love playing around with the, uh, you know, mixing that. They they have a geometric inherently to them because they're all bit very line based. But then playing around with organic, complementing with that organic and creating shapes that are more organic. So there's something really quite beautiful about that. And so these are all of the crazy brushes and there are 95 of them. And then what else? Um, I, I feel bad because I already emailed everybody on my newsletter list today, but I will have, uh, it's gonna be on special, but I think maybe I would normally have people, I give people a code on my newsletter, but anyway, I'll put it on today and I'll have it on special pricing. So if you've tuned into my live, you can still get the special pricing. I'll have it at the top of my website or something. And I'm, Hopefully later today I'll have this on my website and for my Behance subscribers, my Behance subscribers will get a special bonus this month. You'll get the whole collection. So you'll have 95 brushes, 
95 crazy brushes to play with, but as you can see, you can create some really cool things with them. They're not just like, um, I don't know, sort of a throwaway brush. Like at first I kind of, when I was creating these, I was like, oh, these aren't gonna be really useful. I don't think I will be able to do something really like, it's gonna be very niche. But in fact, I think it will be quite cool for the upcoming year. It goes a lot with the trends. I've seen these, this trend of glitch core maximalism. Um, and so I think it's very on trend and I really like playing around and creating these organic shapes, organic, you know, things, everything that I've, cre everything that I've illustrated is like nature organic. And so I think that there's something really fun with these. And I think there's even, there can be even more fun to be had pairing them with my other brushes. Like for example, this is just using one brush from this collection and this is using the Modern Impressionist brush. So um, Joyce, hey Joyce, you want them now? Okay, I will be putting them, I just got it. I'm gonna eat because I'm hungry and take a walk because it's sunny out. And then I'm going to finish putting them on the website and on Behance. And so I wanna thank everybody for tuning in and we kept it around 30 minutes. I didn't want it to be too boring. So thank you so much everybody from my newsletter list for supporting me on my live. It makes it so much fun when I can see your comments and I will be putting them on now. So I'm gonna log off, I'm gonna eat and looking forward to my next live. And I think I'm hopefully, I'm gonna try shoot for like 10.30 in the morning tomorrow. So that'll be even better for people around the world. So thanks so much for tuning in and I will catch you guys later.